right, welcome. Today we're going to do our 2019 server uh, uh, addition to our lab environment, to our home lab environment. Now, I got to be honest with you, this is like my sixth time trying to do this video. Uh, if one of my kids didn't come in and interrupt right in the middle of a crucial moment and I forgot where I was to uh, a phone call going off in the middle of a, a crucial point, I guess I could have just edited it, but I, I decided to redo it all together. It doesn't really matter, uh, but we're going to jump into it. Why would I want server 2019 on my server or on my virtual home environment? Because you will you will encounter 2019 at some point in your IT career. Um, and I wanted to do a GVM scan against it um, just to kind of show to some of my other students that are currently in a class, either at the master's or undergrad level, what they should be looking for. Um, because I'm hearing a lot of I'm hearing a lot from my students saying it's not working properly. So we're going to try and figure that out. Uh, and the best way to do it is to mirror the lab environment that they're seeing. And with that, because I, I want to be able to help out my students and because I want my own lab environment anyway, we're going to add to it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit new. We're going to do a Windows server, no spaces, Windows server 2019. Uh, we're in the C drive. I want to change that to the T drive. I've been meaning to do that. We're going to do it today. I'm going to do D drive. I'm going to put it in the VMs folder, or is it the VM folder? VM folder. You can see where I've tried to do it before, right? So we're just going to, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this, get rid of that. Uh, we're going to put it in this folder. There we go. So it's in the VM folder and we need to select our ISO image. I'm going to do other, just show you where it's at. I downloaded this before. It will be on my Google drive, which I will put a link down below for you. So we're going to do that Windows Server 2019 ISO. You'll see that it automatically calculates into Microsoft Windows and then 2019. I'm going to hit next. We're going to leave that the same. We're not going to touch it. We're going to hit next again. Uh, now we're going to do 2048. I am going to put two CPUs. I will probably regret this. I'm probably going to regret this because it's probably going to be slow, but I am going to do two CPUs. Uh, just because I know what my end environment is going to look like in my mind, I've got this idea of five or six different machines. Uh, and so I have to I have to be careful about how many CPUs I throw in there because we don't want to really be over 50%. I'm anticipating being about 10 CPUs out of 16, which for my environment will be fine. Uh, but I really don't want to go above that to work simultaneous systems all at once, right? Uh, so I'm going to leave it just like it is. We're going to press next. 50 gigabytes is more than enough for a Windows Server for what we're going to do. We're going to hit next. I want to make sure everything in here is good. We're going to hit finish. It's going to go up and then it's going to start to boot up the Windows Server. Um, normally it doesn't try to boot up a VM when we first do it and I don't really know why this one is trying to do it but I'm going to go ahead and stop it because I know that it, it's going to run into errors anyway so I'm going to power off the machine. You don't normally want to power off a machine like that uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do it just because if it messes up then I'll deal with the consequences. We're going to go to general, we're going to go to advanced, we're going to change that to bi-directional and bi-directional just like before. We're going to go to system. We're going to change the pointer device to PS2 mouse. Then we're going to go to storage. We've got that unintended right there for the controller floppy. We need to replace that. I'm going to do uh, create. Now, I have one already right here that we're going to use. But if you wanted to, you could hit create. You can make your own and just go through that. Matter of fact, I may just create that right now. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. We're going to just do create right there. It's going on. I'm going to choose that. We'll see the server ISO, so on and so forth. I'm going to go to network. I'm going to change that to NAT network for our virtual lab environment. I'm going to go to USB and turn that off. So that's all the settings I need to make. I'm going to press OK. And then we're going to boot it up. And I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. We will be back when it's done. All right, here we are. Uh, load in screen once, uh, once we cut in. It's been a little while. I had to break a uh, lunch break. So here we go. We hit that next button. We're gonna install now, and just go through the prompts. It should be pretty cut and dry. Um, we'll be back in a second. All right. Once we get to this screen, we're gonna go down to one to standard edition for 2019. Hit that standard edition. Hit next, and it'll go through. Make sure you don't do that that first one. We really want to do the second one instead, and then accept the license terms. We're going to go with a custom install for Windows, hit next, and it'll start loading up. This will take about 10 to 15 minutes depending on your processor speed. All right, so we're here we are, we customize our saving, uh, settings, and I am going to use Tor, so T-O-O-R, 
123 exclamation mark T O O R one two three exclamation mark. Obviously, I'm only using this type of password on a lab. Uh, if it was a regular password, I would definitely not be using so something so easily hacked, right? Where's further in there? Now, while that's loading up and saving, I'm going to go into VirtualBox, go back to settings, and I want to provide a description. I'm just going to put my password that I entered. Four one two three exclamation mark. That way, in two or three months, when I forget about this thing, it's not it's not killing me. So I'm gonna press OK. Go back to my Windows. Oh, that's Windows 10. No, that's Windows Server. And we're gonna jump into there. And again, Control, right Control, and delete should get me access. There it is. Throw in that password and let it boot up. So uh, while we're going through these settings, one of the important things to remember is that we want uh, our machine, we want our server, which we're going to utilize for vulnerability scanning for the most part. Um, and we might later on develop a small web page to throw on there just because. But uh, in, the, in the virtual environment, in the lab environment, we're really just using this as something to gain a foothold on or to use in penetration testing and then cyber defense so that we can actually see how a penetration tester would come into this type of network. Uh, I do want my computer to be seen by other home networks on this on this one. Uh, we don't need to do that. I'm going to go to local server and then from the local server I want to change my computer name. We're going to get rid of that. Let me throw that in there. We're going to go to change computer name and I'm just going to call it server 2019A. I put A just in case I might do another server later down the road and I don't want it to come back in. So we'll do that. I'm going to save it. It's probably going to come back and say I have to reset the computer. Yeah, yeah, we'll restart it later. And then computer description, I'm just going to do server 2019A. Same thing. We're going to apply that. And there we go. We'll restart later. Uh, I want to also check out the time. So we're in Pacific time, which is fine. So CMD. Come on, there you go. CMD. It's lagging up a little bit. And I'll just do a IP config. And we're at 21 right now. Uh, let's see. All right. So I think we're I think we're ready to reset it now. But I think I'm just going to restart it now. And we'll do a restart. We'll, other unplanned is fine. And we'll see what happens. And if everything went correctly, I should be able to ping it from my Cali Purple. Assuming I'm not, you know, completely out of my mind. And we'll see what happens. We'll see it, we'll see it, we'll see it. We'll wait for this thing to pack up. Now eventually I'm going to add a PF Sense to this, which I might do next. I think, I think I think I'm going to run a vulnerability scan against it first because I have some students that are having difficulties with the whole vulnerability scan uh, assignment in one of my other classes. So I will probably do that next. And again, it's control, right control and delete to get through that. Um, so I'll probably do GVM next, I think, just to uh, just kind of give a video on that to the students that are currently in my, in my current class. I'm teaching a master's level uh, networking class. And so some of them have been reported back and saying they can't get it to work properly. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, so this machine is going to go up and going. Yes, I want it to be discoverable. All right. So now we're going to go back in and we're just going to ping it. So ping 10.0.2.1. My bad. 2.21. And let's see what we come up here. Oh, it doesn't want to detect it. It doesn't want to detect it. All right, well, let's, let's try it from the control C. I bet, I bet it will let me ping it from this side. Let's see here. Let me see here. CMD, oop, not CMFD, CMD, command prompt, and let's do ping 10.0.2.19, and it's coming back. So we have one way ping. I've seen this before. And we're gonna we're gonna fix this. So let's let's check out our ARP list. So ARP A. And there's two one nine right there. Do, do, do. Okay. 
and check out our ARP list over here, ARP-A, and it's seeing it right there. So I should be able to ping it. Okay, so ping's not working, which means it's probably a firewall rule. So let's press Control C here. Uh, let's go back into here, capture. Da da da. We'll type in firewall. Da 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 da. And inbound rule. Da, 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 da. Echo request is what we're looking for. Here it is, that's IP6, here's IPv4. Let me drag that over so you can see it a little better. Uh, IPv4 in, and you can see that it is not enabled, so we wanna enable that. So I'm gonna enable rule, which is going to allow it, and let's go ahead and see if that doesn't fix our problem now. So let me go back over to Kali and rerun it, and there we go. All right, so now we have ping across it. Um, if this was a normal server that wasn't on my virtual environment, I would probably not enable echo request, or I would probably leave it to where it doesn't respond to ping requests. But being in a home lab, um, I want to be able to troubleshoot my own personal network. And, and let's be honest here, it's not really providing anything. Since we're doing a, a learning environment, it makes sense to, to do it this way. All right, uh, I think we're all set up on this aspect of it. I think the next video I'm gonna do is for that vulnerability scan. For some of my students in my master's class that are having so many problems with it. Um, but I think that's it for today. Thank you very much, and we will see you guys later. Have a good one.